We give thanks to God for the blessing and the gift of having been able to study this Psalm 119. Congratulations for reaching the end of the chapter and making these 176 verses a daily meditation in which we dove deep in each day long to know God's word more. Remember, we have a challenge, the challenge of reconciling with God's word and making it our daily nourishment so that it becomes familiar, useful, important of our daily and permanent meditation because we cannot do it alone, nor should we. Welcome to our devotional, Mana, where we listen to and obey God's word. We are now in the last eight verses of Psalm 119, headed by the letter B and the word Ta, searching for God and His word. Verses 169 and 170. May my cry come before you, Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. May my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. Notice that it is a similar way of thinking as the Apostle Paul expressed in Romans 12 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Because here the psalmist wanted that his understanding of life and the world be molded and transformed by God's word. May my cry come before you. May my supplication come before you. And this is another reference made by the psalmist, this time for liberation. Give me understanding according to your word. So he wanted revelation and liberation, but only consistent with God's word and God's will. So he did not just want any type of liberation or freedom. No, he asked that this freedom be according to the promises of God's word. Verses 171 and 172. May my lips overflow with praise, for you teach me your decrees. May my tongue sing of your word, for all your commands are righteous. When the psalmist says, may my lips overflow with praise, and may my tongue sing of your word. What he wanted was for his, his praise, his tongue, his speech to praise God. That they would speak of his wonders. Because he knew that often the words that come out of our mouth are vain, are evil, not edifying. And he is determined for others to listen so that they will praise God. And so he is committed to speak about God's word. May my lips overflow with praise. His lips were able to praise God because he had been taught by God's word, by God himself. And so the psalmist's lips do not praise God just naturally. Instead, it is because he has learned God's truth by God himself. For all your commands are righteous. Now let's read verses 173 and 174. May your hand be ready to help me, for I have chosen your precepts. I long for your salvation, Lord, and your law gives me delight. When he says, may your hand be ready to help me, the psalmist knew that he could confidently ask for God's help because he had chosen to love and to keep God's word. Do you recall when Peter was sinking when he stepped out of the boat, Peter said, Lord, help me. And the Lord's hand extended out to save him. So this expression, may your hand be ready to help me, for I have chosen your precepts. And then he says, I long for your salvation, Lord, and your law gives me delight. And these two expressions go together because God's salvation is on behalf and according to his word, as it says in First Peter chapter 1. Verse 23 and verses 176, excuse me, 175 and 176 of the Psalm 119 say, Let me live that I pr may praise you, and may your laws sustain me. I have strayed like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commands. This verse 175 is a good biblical declaration of what the Bible says in regards to salvation. Because it reminds us that this salvation comes directly from God to the lost souls. Weak, scattered as we are, God's salvation is for all of those who truly long for it in their heart. 
And so how does the Psalm 119 end? We may say that the last section of this great psalm emphasizes the great need the psalmist has for God and his dependence on him. His love and dedication towards God's word does not give him more spiritual independence. On the contrary, it makes him more dependent of the need to seek God clearly. Look at what the psalmist is requesting in the verses that we just read. Let's summarize these last eight verses. And notice how the psalmist in verse 169 is requesting understanding. In verse 170, he is asking for deliverance. In verses 171 and 172, he is asking for the ability to praise God justly, righteously. In verses 173 and 174, he is asking for strength to live a righteous life. And in verse 175, he is asking for strength to persevere. So what are these last eight verses of Psalm 119 telling me? That each day we must be conscious and the need is revealed by the petitions we make each day. But notice that this psalm does not end being a lamenting in desperation. No, instead, a sense of need. Because there is an evident and profound conviction of the sufficiency of God's will for all of us. The psalmist is saying, I have strayed like a lost sheep. And so this great psalm ends with a very moving note. Because the psalmist is remembering that at one point of his life, he went cold. That his tendency was towards sin. To walking, wandering as a lost sheep. And so he asks God to seek him. And so here there is a confession of imperfection on behalf of the psalmist. A lack of power. And this in reality means or represents the best thing that can happen to a Christian because he is saying to God that he cannot do it alone, that he cannot do it in his own strength. And so here the author is not justifying himself by his devotions, despite reiterating that he had obeyed the Lord's teachings. No. And notice that this verse that we are analyzing is very emotional, filled with tears, because truly if we analyze what we just read, we will notice that we are all astray. So we need to pray to be visited, sought by the good shepherd who is our Lord Jesus Christ so that he brings us back to the flock. He is saying, Lord, teach me to find the way back home as a stray sheep who wanders further and further away from home. So he considered himself and continued to be as a sheep, the Lord's sheep, his property. But he had faith that God would seek him to be restored. This is why he says, I have strayed like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commands. And God sought his servant through his word. God seeks us in his word. His word tests us. His word encourages us, strengthens us. His word corrects us, teaches us, helps us. It gives us understanding. It protects us. This is what we have been studying for several weeks as we analyzed this Psalm 119. Seek your servant. And why? Because the reality is that we are weak because we go astray, because we are sinners. Yet, we are still God's servants. And God is willing to seek us and give us life. You recall the Apostle Paul in Romans 7.21 when he said, Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? But this is when God says, I have come to seek you and this is why I have brought my son, Jesus Christ, so that you no longer need to continue fighting with your flesh, but instead have victory each day. Here Psalm 119 ends with a note of urgency in which there is a need. And how does this psalm end? Well, it motivates us to not allow our hearts to become hardened, to allow God's word to speak to our heart each day. This psalm ends with a reminder that the power and the greatness of God's word do not rest, that his greatness and his glory is based on the fact that God comes to us and seeks us in and through his word. I think there cannot be a clearer expression amongst what we have studied during these two weeks. Do not go looking for an emotional experience or something strange out of the ordinary to happen in your life. No, instead, go to the Bible each day, go to God's Word each day, and remain day after day, listening, reading, 
writing and be assured that God will reveal himself to your heart. I know that God wants to reveal himself to your life each day, and he will do it because his word is revelation for the heart that is thirsty to listen to him, to understand him, and to follow his footsteps each day. I would like for you there in the YouTube channel where most of you are accessing this series of our devotional, Mana, I'd like for you to write me, write to me and tell me what was most impactful to you of the Psalm 119? How has it marked your heart? But above all, I'd like for you to tell me what commitment will you make from here on out after having read and analyzed this Psalm completely and above all, how it has presented to us the immense need we have each day to approach God's word and allow it to minister to us, to speak to us, and to reach the depths of our heart. And so I leave you with the task. If you do not have a Bible at home, find one. Have the Bible close to you so that each morning when you wake up, you read it as your spiritual nourishment. And this will inspire you each day to grow in your knowledge of God. Okay, our suggested reading for today is Genesis 41, verses 1 through 27. And you will read about how God uses Joseph to reveal Pharaoh's dream and the powerful words that Pharaoh says to Joseph when he says that he would have never imagined so much wisdom from a man filled with the Holy Spirit. And so you will see how Pharaoh acknowledges Joseph's knowledge, his wisdom. And why? Because Joseph spoke according to God's word. And this is how every child of God should speak. And remember, take notes. Okay, let's prepare our day today in prayer, commending ourselves to God and preparing because tomorrow we begin a new series that I know you will enjoy and learn a great deal from. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for the beginning of this new day. Thank you for your word that inspires us, motivates us, and challenges us. Thank you for the Psalm 119 that places in us the commitment the desire, the longing of making the Bible our spiritual nourishment daily so that we approach it for you to speak to us and to minister to us each day. We want to give you our life and all our tasks. We beg you to go in front of us and keep us from evil and the evil one, giving us the petitions and the longings of our heart, making your word to reveal, to be revealed in our lives, making it our hope of salvation. Thank you because this day is in your hands and you will guard our coming and our going, keeping us from evil and the evil one. And may your grace accompany us in all that we do. We praise you, we bless you, and we give you thanks. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen and amen. And remember, tomorrow we begin a new series, so be very attentive. Write to your friends and tell them that you have a link to share with them and send them the YouTube link so they can access the devotional. And as we typically suggest, make your comments through our YouTube channel. Click like on our publications so that day after day our devotional continues to grow in the task of bringing God's word to the ends of the earth. To our entire Mana family around the world, remember that our world conference each day is receiving more and more registrations. So do not wait to the end and register as soon as possible all of those who are interested in joining us with their family because this will be a very special event so go to our webpage devotionalmanow.com and you will be able to access instructions on how to register for our world conference and i wait for you tomorrow in our next devotional time blessings to all